This is my 2003 Golf. I started noticing rust appearing at the bottom of the front fender on both the right side and the left side of the vehicle. Um, I looked into it a little bit more and I found out that this is a common problem. Uh, there's even a service bulletin out there from Volkswagen about this. But what happens is dirt and debris comes in through the rain tray up top here and it falls down inside the fender and it collects down here and it's wet and it just sits in there wet and then it starts rusting at the bottom of the front uh, fender here. It can go into your rocker panel, it can go into your door. Luckily I caught it early and so what I'm going to show you how to do is um, just a quick fix on trying to knock back the rust. This isn't a perfect solution um, and even if you don't have rust you should do this 100% because you're going to find dirt in here and it will happen if it hasn't started happening already. So make sure you do this and um, if you do have some rust I'll show you what you can do to try to slow it down or stop it and uh, we'll do the best we can. Here I've got the tools that you need for the job and nice to have tools. You need a T25 screwdriver. I've got a poking screwdriver just to get dirt out, rust encapsulator or inhibitor of any type, brake cleaner, a hand drill, a couple of wire wheels that go in the drill. You can see what I used here and a wire brush for really getting in there. Nice to have tools, an assortment of different grinding wheels and brushes, a mirror, 10 millimeter socket, a screw gun with a T25 Torx bit, compressed air is really nice for getting all that dirt out of there, and a bucket for catching dirt. Here's just a close up of where I was seeing the rust. Um, I've actually already grinded it out, so you can't see very much, but it was starting to show up in here, and you can actually see the bubbling paint around here. Um, if I really wanted to get into this, I would actually uh, you know, grind out this bubbling paint, but I'll tell you why I'm not doing that in this repair. But this is where I was seeing the rust, and it can spread all through here if you don't address it. So you're going to need to get the vehicle front end in the air, get the front wheels off. That's on you guys. After you get in here, you're going to find a bunch of Torx screws holding the front fender liner in place. You just got to find them. One, two, three, you know, four, five, six. You don't have to take them all off, just take kind of the screws in the back here, and then you'll be able to pop this out of place here. You kind of got to use a little muscle at the top to get it to fully pop out. Not fully, but partly. And then I just tucked it behind the tie rod here. You don't have to fully get it off, just the back part. You can use a bungee cord to tie it up, and then that'll give you access to this area. So I've already cleaned this out, but when I opened both sides here, there was dirt in here, about up to here, and it's all packed in here. Um, and it was wet, and it hasn't rained here for a week. So that just gives you an idea of how long it's sitting in here, and it's just, it's like a sponge, it stays wet in here. Um, and just as a side note, you might actually even find a uh, some sound dampening, like sponge material on the inside of your fender liner. Remove that, you don't want that in there. It was from the factory, but it'll hold moisture. So. Come in here, scrape out all the dirt as well as you can. Um, use some brake cleaner, uh, compressed air, just get it clean first, and then we're gonna come in and we're gonna grind it a little bit. One thing I wanna be clear about here is that rust is like cancer. Once it gets into the metal, you have to totally cut it out if you want it to stop. So what we're doing here, this is a temporary fix. My only goal here is to slow down the progression of the rust, hopefully stop it, but in, you know, in all, reality, we're probably not going to stop it. It's probably just going to slow it down for a few years. But hey, that's good enough for me. So first thing I'm going to do is once I get in here, I'm going to poke it out with a screwdriver, get as much dirt out of there as I can. If you got compressed air, it's really nice. Get everything out of there. And then really, it's just about going hog wild with the grinding. Um, don't be shy. You're going to have to grind some of your paint off. Like, I don't care if you're worried about how it looks, like the wor the rust is worse. Um, so you're gonna have to get some of this outside here. You can figure out how to repair that later, but you want to just grind off as much rust as possible. It's humanly possible. And uh, that's the first step. When you're grinding with a wire wheel, you have to use safety glasses. I didn't include this in my tool list, but you'd be a fool not to. These can fly off. Um, it gets pretty dirty too. I recommend a uh, face mask.
get it as much as possible with the wheel. Then you can go in with the more detailed brush that allows you to go straight in. Again, just get everything you can. Lastly, uh, I was able to get um, some hard to reach areas with a hand brush, um, especially back in the corner here. So you just wanna grind it out as much as possible. And just, the more you can do, the better. And if you got a knockoff paint, do it. Just get as much out as possible. Um, I have a couple little bubbles here, and I noticed that it's almost like water got under there, but it's not rusting too bad. I chose not to grind off these bubbles. It'll probably bite me later, but I don't care. Um, I'm just trying to slow things down. After you've done as much as humanly possible for grinding, the next step is gonna to be to just hose this out with brake cleaner. Just get it as clean as you can, and then let it dry for at least eight hours. I let mine dry overnight because there was some moisture in here. You want it to be super dry, so if you can, wait for a day. All right, now, go out and get yourself a can of rust inhibitor, rust encapsulator. Um, a really good product is called POR15, P-O-R-15. Um, I just don't have any on hand. Um, this is just something I picked up at the auto parts store. Pretty much any auto parts store should have this. You're gonna just really coat everything in here with this now that we're clean. Make sure to get in these cracks, every little angle, and obviously tape anything off that you don't want to get overspray on. This is the passenger side fender. I just wanted to give you a good close up to show you uh, what we're looking at in here and what it looks like after I've already gone through and done all the cleaning and grinding. Um, you can see that I've gotten it down as much as I can down to the bare metal, metal but you can still see a little rust in there. Um, we're just doing the best we can. This rust encapsulator I'm gonna use, um, most rust inhibitors and encapsulators, they actually make like a chemical bond with the rust and they really work well. I've used many different types. They all seem to work pretty well to me. Um, but once we spray it on there, you'll see it'll turn black and then hopefully it'll seal up this rust and it won't come back for many years. Uh, all right, it's been 24 hours and you can see that the rust inhibitor has set up. Um, all of the rust that was showing before now looks black. And this is part of that kind of chemical bond that I was talking about where something, the rust inhibitor or the rust encapsulator does something where it actually kind of bonds with the rust and it's got like a, like a glossy coat on it now, like it's sealed. Um, hopefully this will last for several years to come and will slow down the progression of the rust in my Volkswagen. All right, to complete this repair, other than putting your fender liners back on, uh, we're gonna wanna remove this um, rain cowl the upper rain tray so that we can get into the main rain tray down here and clean out any debris and dirt that's still in there. So start by pulling this uh, rubber piece off right here. And then the next step is gonna be taking off the windshield wiper blades, which I'll show you next. All right, you'll see a little black cover on top of the nut that holds the windshield wiper blade on. Pop this off with a flathead screwdriver. Uh, it's a 13 millimeter nut. I like to use an impact so it doesn't have to Put a twisting motion on the windshield wiper blade but you can use a socket wrench that's fine just hold the blade so get this guy off and the next step is that we need to use a lot of times the wiper blades are really stuck on there and you need to use some kind of windshield wiper blade puller now this is a snap-on i got when i was an auto mechanic so it's probably not easy to find for uh the average person. This is another one. I don't know where I got it, but you can look around online and see if you can find a windshield wiper puller. These things make your life so much easier and it can be really tight on the VWs. And I think that's why I had the shorter one uh, to get these guys in here. But you basically open up the pullers, get it down under the blade, it's just like any other puller that you might use. Uh, get it tight so that it's gripping, and then you just twist this guy. Eventually, there it goes, you hear a pop. 
and it just pops right off and that's it um, again you don't have to have these I would try doing it first without a puller but if it's really stuck on there then you probably do need a puller to get this all the way off we've got the windshield wiper blades off now we need to remove this little access cover this is for the uh, cabin air filter which while you're in there you should replace because it'll probably be filthy filthy and most people never replace them so this guy you just lift up and pull out a little bit and then the this cowl under the windshield here it kind of sits in a groove at the bottom of the windshield so when you lift up you'll feel it kind of loosening under the the bottom of the windshield and, and you should be able to just pop it up get it out of there there we go now we can get in and vacuum out any remaining debris looks like we had part of a mouse nest underneath the cabin air filter that's not helping When you go to put the rain tray back into the bottom of the windshield, I just wanted to show you, this is that little groove I was talking about at the bottom, and this, uh, this thing right here, this has got a groove up top that goes into this uh, channel right here. Um, a lot of times you get debris in this channel um, right here, so it's always, Good idea if you can to take something, this is a bone, but delicate and clean that out and possibly even put a little bit of silicone lubricant in there before you snap this piece back into it. And then you kind of take your fist once it's in the groove and kind of bang along it and it should pop back in. So I just finished vacuuming out the rain tray and there was a lot of dirt and debris in there. So this is absolutely a required step to get everything cleaned out of there because it's just going to keep flowing back down in there. Really, you should do this every few years. Um, just wanted to show you the cabin air filter. This is the filter that filters air before it gets pulled into your um, heating and cooling system that blows the fan and the air out of the dashboard, sucks air through a filter right here. So when you're in here, um, just make sure you replace this guy. Um, most of the time, nobody does this throughout the lifetime of the vehicle, and you'll find it disgusting and totally clogged. So, good idea to replace this while you're in there, and you'll figure it out. It's a little tricky getting it in and out, but it's pretty self-explanatory once you get in there. Um, but that's about it, everybody. Um, I'm going to put everything back together. Good luck. Um, I think this is important if you want to make sure your car doesn't rust out in the future.